Frankie, thanks for joining me. Uh, it's a shame it's in uh, these sad circumstances as we mourn the, the loss of uh, one of the greatest owner breeders, uh, Prince Khalid Abdullah, who you rode a lot of great winners for, had a great relationship. Frankie, just tell us a little bit about the man himself and, and what he meant to you. Obviously, I was associated with John uh, early doors in my career and uh, he, uh, I think my first group one was in the early 90s on Wirefan. And uh, look, uh, before I uh, even started riding, when I was a kid, at Luca Kumani's, I remember going to Newmarket for the Guineas, watched uh, Dancing Brave beating Green Desert. With the favourite, Dancing Brave strikes the front with Dancing Brave, quickens up in the start of a very good horse in this general accident, 2000 Guineas, Dancing Brave, gravel round, Starkey looked round, no danger, Dancing Brave, Green Desert, Huntingdale third. So that was uh, an icon horse, obviously, a you know, we know what he's done. He was second in the derby when the King George and the Ark. So I, I was grow, I grew up in that era, and obviously, the, the greats of Warning, and then later on, obviously, uh, probably the best horse that I ever seen or ever ridden against is Franco, an amazing horse, and uh, you know, a titan of this sport. You know what I mean? He, uh, you know, uh, owner breeder, uh, great mares, great stallions, and great racehorses for decades. And you know, obviously, to me, uh, in these later years, obviously, Nabo, is, she's been a, a special horse for me, and uh, and you know, and um, wearing those famous uh, colours, it was always very exciting, as you know, Martin. Yeah, well, I've I've never been able to ride horses as good as you, but I've ridden winners for the great man. And remote stepping up markedly on that Pontefract debut to win this in taking fashion. It is a privilege to pull them colours on, isn't it? Um, he's, he's a very, he was a very private, quiet man, wasn't he? Not many people got to speak to him. Did you have a, a relation, working relationship with him? Did you speak to him much over, over the years? No, not really. Uh, like you said, he was a very shy person, but very knowledgeable, very passionate about racing. And, you know, and, uh, he, he ran a very tight ship, you know, and uh, the results speak to themselves. And... Uh, uh, it's amazing what he's done and it'll never be forgotten because, uh, you know, Jodmont brand uh, has been amazing for deca decades. I think yourself and Enabel, they, they kept the spark alive for, for Prince Khaled, didn't, didn't they? And um, I think he, he, he attended, uh, he went to Longshan when you, you won a, a last arc. He was there in person, wasn't he? Yeah, I'll be honest. I think that's the last time I saw him. He, um, he, um, he didn't come racing there often in the, in, in the later stage of his life. And uh, he came for the new opening of the Paris Longchamp Grandstand. Um, and uh, obviously he was there for the second arc of Enable. And, uh, you know, it was uh, great to see him smile. And uh, he was waving from, from the balcony. And, uh, you know, uh, she was a special horse and uh, he was a special man. Well, he was, he was very sporting, wasn't he? He was a sporting man to keep her in training for so long. It was, it was great. It was what the public needed. When, when did you first realise that she was special? Was it, was it when she won the Oaks at Epsom? Was that the first day you realised, hold on a minute, I've got a star here? I think uh, Chester, you know, uh, I mean, she, she was a big unit of a horse. And uh, to go down Chester the way she did, I thought, well, you've got to be pretty special because, you know, as you know, Chester is very demanding for a, for a big horse. But... Uh, she looked, she took like a uh, dock on water and uh, I'd realised that, well, if she can get around Chester like this, um, uh, Epsom will not be a problem. And, you know, then the rest is, is history. Enable and Frankie Dottori in the pink cap. Rhododendron and Ryan Moore in the dark blue jacket. Chased by Alluringly back in third. Both riders going for everything. And Enable is just getting on top from Rhododendron. Inside the final furlong. Enable kicks two lengths clear of the favourite. And racing up towards the line. Enable for a fourth Oaks win for Frankie Dottori. In the colours of Talid Abdullah. And Enable wins the Oaks. You went into Epsom. I think you are pretty confident. And that was a... It was a gutsy performance, wasn't it, Epsom? And then she seemed to thrive from that race. Yeah, obviously, look, uh, after that, um, you know, she won the King George. And I think probably the best performance was as a free roll when she went to uh, Shanti for the arc. Uh, uh, I think she, she was a, a, a very best that day. And, uh, and uh, you know, you don't, you, you don't win arcs with that ease. And, uh, you know, amazing that we managed to pull it up pull it off the second time at Longchamp. And, uh, you know, she's been a great mare and, 
you know, she'll go down in history as one of the greats, especially with uh, uh, winning freaking George's was never been done before. Uh, which race would stand out for you as the, as the race you most enjoyed? Probably the first arc, but probably the most memorable for me was the, the King George. And in terms of the legacy Prince Carl had leaves behind, I think we've still got plenty to look forward to, haven't we? In terms of his breeding yes, operation. Of course, look, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's like I said, a great operation. They got some great mares. Uh, they got some great stallions, and uh, I'm sure that uh, even in his absence, uh, the operation is going to go forward and produce great champions like they did in the past. What was the, what's the plan for Enable? Enable, she's next door. She's at the uh, stud, and uh, I haven't managed to see her yet. But uh, uh, once this lockdown is finished, I'm make sure that I'm going to go and see her. When people think of Prince Carlos, um famous green, pink and white colours, they're going to think of you. Uh, synonymous with the great and able. Um, very kind words. Before you go, um, what's the plan with you then? When are we going to see you in action next? I am planning to go to Dubai next week for the first um, um, Maidan Carnival and uh, I'm most likely going to spend some time over there because there's nothing going on here. And um, yeah, I Don't enjoy like Dubai. And, <laughs> hopefully not. And hopefully try to rack up some winners. It'd be like winding the clock back, won't it, riding a, a carnival in Dubai? Yeah, when you, when you used to be there as well. <laughs> yeah, the good old days. Did, have you still got your it, restaurant it be, in Dubai? No, it beats going to, uh, to, to your weathers in, the, in, in this weather anyway, that's for sure. In Kempton, we had some good times there. I, I think you're the only man I've ever met who got thrown out of his own restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was a night. Yeah, that was a good day, yeah. Um, well, look, Frankie, you've been riding like a man possessed for the last few years, and I'm sure 2021 will be the same. Thanks for joining us, and hopefully we'll speak again soon. Okay, Martin, thank you. You take care as well. Say hello to everyone.